program manager. Um, and yeah, today we're going to be doing sort of a brief overview of the worker benefits program. We're not going to go too into the nitty gritty, but um, we'll give like a good overview. And then we'll also um, have a little time to talk about some of the sort of uh, general questions and some of the challenges that we all might be coming up against in delivering benefits. Um, but uh, before we get started, I wanted to also give my colleagues here here on the call with me uh, supporting us a chance to introduce themselves. Uh, Raquel, do you want to? Oh, Raquel just took a bite of food. Kate, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kate, and I am the membership coordinator here at the Federation. Um, pronouns she, hers, a, yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm generally the person doing frontline communication with a lot of our members about general member needs and member benefits. Uh, and I live in Philly. Hey everyone, thank you. Sorry, I was eating a peach. Um, my name is Raquel Navarro. I use she, her, ella pronouns. Um, I'm based in the San Francisco Bay Area and I'm the communications coordinator for the Federation of Work Co-ops. So great to have you all here and thanks so much. Props to Maddie for putting together this awesome presentation. Thanks Raquel, thanks Kate. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm based in Philadelphia. I use she or they pronouns. Um, and I've been here at the Federation for almost two years. Uh, so really happy to see so many familiar faces and also a lot of new names uh, here in the webinar. Uh, so today, like I said, we're gonna do sort of a broad overview of the program. We're gonna look at sort of the, the basic fundamentals of what the program is built on um, and then go into a little bit of a sense of what our operations are, our offerings are with uh, dental vision insurance, disability and accident insurance, um, some of the ways that we've come up with to support our members in navigating the general medical insurance landscape. Um, then we're going to go into breakout rooms for a little bit um, just to sort of share out together some of the questions, challenges, successes um, that y'all have had already in offering benefits. Um, then we're gonna talk a little bit about the next steps as we go into our open enrollment season, which begins on October 1st. And that's the time of the year when uh, all of our members are able to um, join in on our benefits program, whether or not you're new or have been part of the program for a while or not yet. Um, before we get started, uh, if you've been in one of my webinars before, you've seen this slide, um, but I find it really, really important and helpful to me to really uh, make sure that we're all grounded in sort of the reality of uh, what where this program sits in our sort of broader healthcare landscape in the United States. Um, you know, this is a program that primarily uh, supports our members in accessing different types of insurance, but both for me personally, it's very important. And also for the USFWC as a whole, um, we know that insurance is not the actual solution to us all getting the healthcare that we need. Um, we at the USFWC have endorsed Medicare for all as a policy position. Um, we believe that healthcare is a human right and that we all do have the right to free quality care that is accessible and um, will meet all of our needs. Um, so that's just really important to me personally. Um, I am really grateful to be able to do this work um, within this political lens and this human rights lens um, and to be able to support all of you, all of our members in using the tools that we currently have available and being able to navigate and use them as best we can. Um, so that's, yeah, that that's just a, really where this program is grounded and everything that I try and offer in this program and the way that I work with all of our members, I really try and make it um, as universal as I can. Um, and sort of to that end, um, the sort of basics of our program, it's open to all of our members, um, whether you're a worker co-op, you're a democratic workplace, um, an associate member, a nonprofit co-op developer, anyone who's a member um, can join into our programs. Uh, it's important to us that regardless of citizenship status, people are able to access the benefits that we offer. Um, 
Our programs can be utilized with social security numbers or individual tax identification numbers. Um, we also work really hard to make it LGBTQIA inclusive. Um, we, some of our programs are open to people's partners, people's children, um, or other dependents that all of that is available regardless of gender, regardless of uh, marital status, with the exception of one of the benefits that the IRS requires, like legal marriage. Um, but yeah, that that's a non-issue here. Um, we also, I've worked really hard to try and make our program as accessible and safe for trans folks in our community to be able to use. Um, we have some systems in place to minimize folks' contact with dead names or old names that might be still legal names. Um, so if people don't use those names, I have some systems in place to override that. If I'm in communication, um, we're getting some movement with the insurance companies to allow people to choose a chosen name for insurance cards. Um, that being said, I know that everyone has a different and equally valid level of comfort or preference with how they use legal names or chosen names in different like bureaucratic settings. So all of that, um, we do our very best to do that on like a person by person basis um, with really a lot of care to privacy and um, just trying to minimize the harm of what like the bureaucracy of the medical system can do. Um, there are always gonna be limitations because of legal regulations and insurance company policies, but um, I see it as my job to help people navigate that. And I'm always open to feedback or suggestions or insight on how I can do that better. Um, finally, another really important piece of this is that I am not an insurance broker. I'm not licensed as an insurance broker. Um, I am an educator. I do administration with the program. Um, I partner with our insurance broker at Diversified Human Solutions, Matthew Tay. Um, he is the one who manages the re direct relationships with the insurance companies and does the negotiations and um, quoting when it gets into that with medical insurance. Um, so that's also just something that's important to know as we're going through this. Um, so these are the programs that we offer as the worker benefits program. Um, we started about five years ago with a dental insurance program, which we then expanded to adding a vision insurance option. Um, last year, or this year is our first year of offering accident and disability insurance. Uh, and then we also have a couple options for helping pay for health insurance or access health insurance. Um, I'll get into it a little bit more with the sort of complications and obstacles with health insurance, but um, through the quotes that we're able to get through Diversified Human Solutions and also the partnership that we have with the Harrison Group, um, we're sort of slowly but surely trying to open up more options and more easy access and entry points for our members who are looking to get health insurance for their members. Um, Another really big part of the worker benefits program is the research that we're able to do because of having, having my position um, be really dedicated to this program. So one of our ongoing projects is with retirement savings. Uh, we're trying to figure out um, what is a, both a, a values aligned and also a easily accessible way for our members to um, enter into retirement savings programs. And that's something that we're really trying to do um, in, a, in a slow and deliberate way so that <laughs> it uh, really can work, work well for as many of our members as possible. Um, so yeah, we're gonna start off with a little information about our dental insurance and vision insurance. Um, these are our oldest programs and our largest programs and the ones that we really have like it's quite easy to link into them at this point. Um, they are both national programs, which is one of the like weird perks of dental and vision not being grouped in with general medical insurance, which is 
absurd because your eyes and your teeth are of course part of your body, but it helps us in this one way, which is that we can offer these dental and vision plans on a national level. Um, because they're national plans, they have national networks, there are rates that are set across the entire membership. Um, and because everyone is then on this one plan, um, we can keep the prices relatively low and the plans relatively strong. So instead of having like, a group of 10 here and a group of three here and a group of 25 over there, everyone's pulled together into this group that's almost 500 people strong. Um, and so it's really one of those ways that we get to like leverage our collective power as a membership, which is really cool. Um, and so because of that, the insurance companies bill the USFWC and then we split that bill out and bill each organization monthly. These are just some highlights of what's included in the dental and vision plan benefits. I'm not going to go all the way in depth so that we can get a sort of overview of the whole program. Um, we also have pretty detailed webinars from past years that you can see on our website, um, and I'll be sending out a lot of very detailed information uh, in the sort of follow up email to this webinar. Um, but our dental plan, the carrier is Emeritus, which is, like I said, a national network. The plan includes 100% uh, coverage of routine cleanings and exams each year, as well as a set of x-rays and a couple additional benefits for children, including fluoride application. Um, for the more complex procedures, there are um, coverage goes up to 80 or 50% up to the $1,500 max coverage. Um, the other thing that we really like about the Emeritus plan is that it has very good out of network coverage. So if you have a dentist that you have a long time relationship with, that you really trust, um, even if they aren't in the network, you can still expect to get uh, good coverage for those providers. Um, IMED, we also have a, a pretty solid plan for your standard eye exam. It's a $10 copay and then a copay for lenses and then an allowance for either frames or contact lenses each year. Um, so they also have some coverage of out of network services. Uh huh. So we have gotten our rates together for 2022. This is, um, I don't know if I've sent this out over email at all yet. So maybe you've seen it here first. Um, this is what the premiums are going to look like for dental and vision insurance in 2022. Um, the rates at the top with the monthly premium rates are per person um, and then designated across as uh, for different types of arrangements of enrolling dependents. Um, this will also definitely get sent out after the webinar so you don't have to like rush to write it all down or anything. Um, but for a single worker dental insurance is $36 a month. Vision insurance will be $780 a month. Um, and then the rates at the bottom are the per organization monthly administrative fees. Um, so those are those are not per person, they're per organization monthly. Um, and the amounts correspond to the number of people that you have in your organization enrolled. Um, and there is a small discount if you are enrolled in both dental and vision insurance that you have the option of choosing either one. Um, so yeah, that's the, the general overview for now, dental and vision insurance. Um, next, we have our accident and disability insurance. Uh, this is has been offered for the first time this year. Um, two different types of insurance. Again, you can pick either one or both to give your members access to. Um, accident insurance, you can sort of think of as like a supplement to health insurance in some way. Um, it's basically like you pay a monthly premium and then if God forbid you're in some sort of accident or emergent medical situation, you will get like flat payments that correspond to different things that might occur. Uh, in the course of emergent care or any sort of injury. So it's like X amount for ambulance ride, X amount for a particular injury. Um, and then those costs are paid out for you to use however you need, whether it's like for co-pays or towards a deductible or for like 
additional support or any of the numerous costs that can come with emergent or emergent medical care. Um, disability insurance exists to partially replace income in the event that you suddenly cannot work because of accident or illness or pregnancy or childbirth. Um, it's important to note that this is only for like personal bodily disability. So like you can't use it if your partner or child gets sick um, or if you are not the like gestational parent of a child, you can't use it for adoption or being a non-gestational parent. Um, that's just how the insurance works. Um, one of the real, there's a couple like things that I think are really important about our accident and disability insurance offerings that might be kind of unusual from what members would be able to find um, just like shopping independently. Um, one is that our rates, because we're based in Pennsylvania and our broker is based in Pennsylvania, the rates across the country are at, set at the Pennsylvania rates, which is like pretty significant savings for um, folks in most states. Um, it's either equal to or less than the amount that it costs in, in most states. Um, the benefits are also voluntary, which means that workers themselves pay for the benefit. So the only cost to the workplace is the um, annual administrative fee to the USFWC. And then workers arrange their payment directly with the broker of Diversified Human Solutions. So it sort of stays removed from the USFWC, which I think is good on a privacy level um, and also allows people to just maintain that benefit uh, as a portable benefit as they may go to other jobs over time and can keep it for a long period of time. And the reason why that's also really important is because of this special 2022 only offering of guaranteed issue disability insurance. Um, it's pretty common for disability insurance to be denied for pre-existing conditions, which is really messed up when people have chronic health conditions, um, but it is the way the insurance companies are allowed to operate, so they do. Um, but we have this offering of a guaranteed issue disability insurance for folks who enroll this year, which means that any disability that sort of occurs or arises or is diagnosed after January 1st of 2022, that's covered immediately. Any pre-existing condition after one year of coverage is then covered until the benefit ends because you stop paying for it or because you don't need it anymore. Um, and so this is really, really important, I think, for folks with chronic health conditions. It's really important for folks who um, may at some point want to be pregnant. It's important, I think, for folks who are in um, jobs where uh, the physicality is very important. I mean, it's also important because literally any of us could experience disability at any time. Disability does not discriminate, we know that. Um, so yeah, I just, I think it's really important for, for the general well-being of us all and for people's long-term economic security to understand that this benefit is available. Um, and I'm happy to sort of explain it a little bit further to anyone if, if needed. <clears throat> So there will be opportunities later this year to go more in depth on the medical insurance options, um, but I wanted to make sure to touch on it here today. Um, medical insurance in the United States, as you probably know, is very, very complicated and very, very expensive. Um, we're not able to offer a national plan like we are with the vision and dental insurance because it is also very, very heavily regulated both on a state level and a national level. So it's really, with, unless there is like serious coordination and sort of long-term strategy in very localized um, regions, it's not really possible to have 
a group medical insurance plan for more than one organization. It really has to be done on a workplace by workplace basis, or it can be done through the individual health insurance marketplaces. Um, there are a couple of states listed here where we our most recent research has said that it is actually cheaper to get a small group plan than to go on the individual insurance marketplaces. Um, in the other states, the price difference is just either not different at all or it's sort of nominally different. And so there's, you know, we could find quotes for groups that are large, but it's not going to be like we, there's no silver bullet that we can offer to offer like really discounted rates or anything like that. Um, one option that we do have is through our partnership with the Harrison Group, which is a an administrative company that does uh, health reimbursement accounts, as well as flexible spending accounts and health savings accounts. Um, they can help our members set up uh, arrangements where you can set aside tax-free funds that are specifically designated to pay for health insurance premiums. Um, this is something that a lot of our members in the more expensive marketplaces had like the more expensive states have opted into as well as members with um, workers across multiple states, um, but it's all really going to be a case by case basis. The other thing that's really important to know is that the individual coverage market has changed a lot in the past six months. Um, the most recent COVID stimulus plan, the American Recovery Plan, uh, was the largest expansion of the Affordable Care Act since it was passed initially. Um, and basically the, the cornerstone of the Affordable Care Act is subsidized premiums. So the federal government paying either like a portion of the premium or giving a tax credit on the monthly health insurance premiums and so in April, those subsidies increased across the board, both for people who received them already and also for people who did not previously qualify for them. Um, so it sort of changes the math a little bit. Um, it totally depends on how much money people are making, but so it, it will vary depending on sort of like the, the salary levels and the industry that your workplace is in. Um, but it does sort of change the math around making sure that if your workplace wants to cover a portion of the premium, that it's not a lower portion than the subsidy that they could get from the federal government. So that's sort of a like ongoing math equation for us all to be thinking about. Um, and there's going to be more opportunities later this year to learn a little bit more about this and to hear from Matt Tay, who has some more insight into how that all breaks down. Thanks so much, Raquel, for sharing that in the chat. Okay, so that's sort of that's the the overview of all of our plans. Um, it's a lot of information. Um, are there any questions at this time? It's okay if there aren't, but you can also just unmute yourself if you have a question. I have a question. Sure. Hi, I'm Amy Abbott. I'm with um, a purchasing cooperative in the DC region. And so, hi, I'm curious about eligibility for the member owners of our co-op. So there's, we're, we're here primarily to learn about benefits for our staff, um, mm -hmm. but we're curious about eligibility. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, so eligibility, that's a great question. There, there's eligibility for staff as like, there's like eligibility for a workplace and there's eligibility for individual staff. Um, I'm gonna share, Raquel, actually maybe this is a good time to share the eligibility quiz that I've created, um, where, which is something I'm gonna be asking anyone who's sort of new to the program to be filling out because it really will take you through sort of what is your uh, incorporation structure? How many hours are folks working? Um, and how are people taxed? Because those are the three questions that are really going to determine um, eligibility in the eyes of the insurance companies. 
Um, and then if you want to talk about like individuals, I think we should probably talk about that offline. Um, does that answer your question? I think so. And the eligibility quiz will further answer, I think. Yeah, yeah. I The eligibility quiz I created because there's just, it's sort of like a choose your own adventure kind of thing. Um, you know, we have so many different types of incorporation structures among our membership, so many different ways that people are taxed as a worker co-op that like varies across the states. Um, so, yeah. There's a question in the chat as well, Maddie. Okay. Oh, are there any groups doing this in Washington state? Um, yes, we do have one group that is enrolled in health benefits in Washington state. And we can definitely talk about it more um, offline. You can always email me at benefits at usworker.coop to, to get started on that. Um, rates available for short-term disability insurance or accident insurance. I do. I The rates at this point are preliminary for 2022, but they should not change terribly much, if at all, for 2021. Um, the disability insurance is calculated on a per $100 of benefit, which is a little bit complicated, but the amount is $2.14 per $100 of benefit. Um, and we'll get into more of the details on like how to calculate all that at a later webinar. Um, the disability and accident insurance, if the, um, if the employer wants to pay for disability insurance, it changes a little bit because it means that the benefit will be taxed, um, which it's not if the worker is paying for it themselves. Um, so that's sort of a, a cost benefit thing that folks have to figure out. Um, Raquel or Kate, could you also drop the membership joining link in the chat when you get a chance? Just got a direct message about that. Cool. These are all really good questions and a great place to be starting and to be asking at this point in the year. Um, and now we're actually going to go into breakout groups for a little bit because I am sure that everyone has a lot of questions sort of pickling. And um, one of the things that we know about the American healthcare system is that it is very good at isolating people and making them feel like the whole system is sort of like their own personal behemoth to deal with. Um, so we're gonna go into breakout groups of about four folks for just about 10 minutes 